Shoemaker Levy 9, the first time we can see the biggest impact of a comet. In July of 1994, a vast comet two kilometers in diameter hit Jupiter with the force of 300 million atomic bombs, followed by another 20 impacts that set fire to the clouds of the gaseous planet for six successive days. This was the first time in history that humanity managed to witness live what a planetary collision of colossal magnitudes can do. What happened to Jupiter after the impact and what have we learned since then? The Great Discovery In 1993, a group of astronomers formed by the couple Carolyn and Eugene Shoemaker and David Levy was conducting research at the Palomar Observatory in California in the U.S. when they discovered a massive spot by pure chance in the image records. It was nothing more and nothing less than a vast periodic comet two kilometers in diameter that had been captured by the gravitational pull of Jupiter, which was named Shoemaker-Levy 9, in honor of the discoverers. This was an extremely unusual event because, although hundreds of comets are known in the solar system, this was the first time that one captured by the gravity of a planet instead of that gravity of the Sun was observed. Usually periodic comets are those that orbit the Sun in less than 200 years. But Jupiter is so massive and its gravitational attraction force so great that it can capture any object that gets too close to it. In fact, astronomers believe that many of its moons are asteroids that were captured by Jupiter and never managed to escape its gravitational field. The image of the discovery gave the first proof that it was a strange comet since it had multiple nuclei in a region approximately 50 arc seconds long. For reference, common comets usually have a single nucleus. In contrast, Shoemaker-Levy 9 had about 20, which indicated that something must have happened in the past that fragmented it into several pieces. Brian Mardson of the Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams later noted that the comet was only 4 degrees from Jupiter and that its apparent motion indicated that it was approaching that planet on an inevitable collision trajectory. Where did it come from? The scientific community catalogued the discovery of Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 as a stroke of luck or fate since it was discovered only because the Palomar Observatory had begun a search for near-Earth objects and EOs. If we had not started the search in that same year, we would have never managed to see this comet, since from the moment of its discovery until its collision with Jupiter, it was only with us for a little more than a year. Tracing the comet's trajectory back in time, it was found that it had been orbiting Jupiter for some time, where it was most likely captured from a solar orbit in the early 1970s, although it may well have happened much earlier in the mid-1960s. Through more extensive analysis of images taken before March 24th by the pre-covering method, some observers also found the comet in a March 15th photograph. The pre-covering method is an astronomical term that describes the process by which a known object is identified in archival images or photographic plates to calculate an orbit more accurately in both the past and the future, to know where it came from and what its trajectory will be in the years to come. The volume of space for an object to be said to have been in the orbit of a planet is defined by the Hill Sphere. The Hill Sphere is a gravitational sphere of influence of a celestial body. The concept was defined by American astronomer George William Hill, 1838 to 1914. However, it is also called the Roche Sphere because it was also described independently by the French astronomer Edouard Roche. The Hill Sphere involves three main force fields. One, gravity due to the central body. Two, gravity due to the second body. Three, the centrifugal force that keeps the two bodies away from each other. The Hill Sphere is the sphere within which the sum of the three fields is directed towards the second body, keeping the more petite body trapped in its gravitational field. When Comet SL9 approached Jupiter in the mid-1960s and early 1970s, it entered its aphelion and encountered Jupiter's Hill Sphere. When this happened, the planet's gravity pulled on the comet, pulling it in and capturing it with its gravity. Because the comet's motion was minimal relative to that of the planet, Shoemaker-Levy 9 rushed into Jupiter's atmosphere in almost a rectilinear motion, causing it to end up orbiting the planet's core with a reasonably high eccentricity, that is, with a reasonably slight curvature. 
Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 passed close to Jupiter on July 7, 1992, just over 40,000 kilometers above the planet's clouds and within Jupiter's Roche boundary. The Roche boundary is an area within which the tidal force is strong enough to fragment any body object that remains there. While the comet had had close approaches to Jupiter before, the July 7th encounter appeared to be the closest, and the comet's partition is thought to have occurred at that time, which is why SL9 had a nucleus fragmented into several pieces rather than a solid nucleus like most comets. Each of the pieces to which the comet had been reduced was named with a letter of the alphabet, from Fragment A to Fragment W, with a practice established by astronomers to facilitate its further study. Astronomer Zdenek Zakanina analyzed each fragment and concluded that the original comet may have had a nucleus up to 5 kilometers in diameter. The Event of the Century When it became official that the comet's trajectory was on a collision course with Jupiter, the news caused great excitement in the astronomical community because the impact of two bodies of that magnitude in the solar system had never been observed. SL9 would give astronomers a unique opportunity to peer into Jupiter's dense atmosphere as the collisions were expected to cause eruptions of material from the layers usually hidden beneath clouds. Before the impact, one of the big debates was whether these effects would be visible from Earth or if, for example, they would disintegrate as giant meteoroids. Other suggested effects include that the impacts would generate seismic waves that would propagate across the planet an increase in the amount of fog in the stratosphere due to dust, and an increase in the mass of the ring system. Everyone was excited. It was an event that can only be seen once in a lifetime, and it was necessary, if not obligatory, to use all the observation technology we had to study in detail every second of the impact, as this would help us to understand these events better when a similar threat heads towards Earth. The Big Impact as the date for the collisions approached, astronomers prepared their telescopes, including the Hubble Space Telescope, the X-ray observation satellite ROSAT, and of course the Galileo Space Mission, on its rendezvous journey with Jupiter set for 1996. Successive impacts of the 23 fragments were scheduled to occur between 20 hundred hours and 40 seconds universal time on July 16th, fragment A and 0759 hours and 45 seconds universal time on July 22nd, fragment W. Everything was prepared. No one was going to miss this historic moment. The long-awaited day had began with fragment A's impact, which hit Jupiter's southern hemisphere, creating a hole in the clouds that caused a spot more significant than the Great Red Spot. The instruments on the Galileo mission discovered a bolide that reached a maximum temperature of about 24,000 Kelvin, which contrasts with the temperature of the upper clouds of Jupiter's atmosphere, which have in general a typical temperature of about 130 Kelvin. Then about 40 seconds later, the temperature dropped rapidly to about 1,500 Kelvin. The impacts proved impressive. The fragments, about 21 in total, plunged into Jupiter's atmosphere for six consecutive days. When they hit, they traveled at a speed of about 37 miles per second, or 60 kilometers per second, and heated the atmosphere to at least 53,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 30,000 degrees Celsius. Like the splash that occurs when a rock is thrown into a pond, the impacts created giant columns of material from Jupiter's lower atmosphere, which rose 1,900 miles, or 3,000 kilometers above the clouds, up to the stratosphere. As a result, the splash created a scar in Jupiter's atmosphere with dark debris clouds from the impact that could be seen for months as Jupiter's winds gradually scattered them. As planned, the impacts ended on July 22nd when the W fragment hit the planet. Astronomers had predicted they see the effects of impacts from Earth but had no idea how visible the atmospheric effects on each collision would be. The largest of these were generated by fragment G on July 18th at 0734 hours universal time. This impact created a big dark spot more than 12,000 kilometers in diameter. It was estimated as an explosion of energy equivalent to 6 million megatons of TNT, 600 times the nuclear arsenal of Earth. The black spot that generated fragment G was so dark that amateurs could see it and were able to blind some of the telescopes that observed it. What have we learned from this event? Astronomers learned many things thanks to the impact of this comet on Jupiter. 
On the one hand, those dark clouds of impact debris acted as markers of winds in Jupiter's stratosphere. Following their movement over time, scientists could measure those high-altitude winds to estimate their nature. SL9's impact caused temporary changes in Jupiter's aurora, showing scientists that particles from impacts influenced Jupiter's magnetosphere. According to Dr. Fast, today we can still see changes in Jupiter's atmosphere due to impacts. When the fragments of Shoemaker-Levy 9 crashed into Jupiter, depositing their chemical compounds, the impact processes also produced some chemicals inside Jupiter, and others were unearthed from the lower atmosphere. Some molecules, such as ammonia, were destroyed by sunlight during the weeks and months after the impacts, but others, such as hydrogen cyanide and water, are still seen today. All of that tells scientists how chemistry works in Jupiter's atmosphere and how comets can deposit vast amounts of minerals on a planet, bolstering the theory that Earth's water comes from comets. Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 showed us that significant impacts still occur in the solar system, which was an essential factor in the development of NASA programs aimed at addressing the risk that, one day, one of these bodies will be heading for a collision with Earth. From comet science to Jupiter-related science and impact science, the legacy of that serendipitous discovery by Carolyn and Jean Shoemaker and David Levy continues to this day and extends into the future.